Welcome to Discovering. Warm days and cool nights means it's maple syrup time here in the UP. I had the pleasure of spending a wonderful day at the Paul Family Sugar Bush. On a really good day, we get up to two gallons uh, per tap, which would be almost 20,000 gallons in a day. That's all tonight, so sit back, put your feet up and relax. It's Monday night and time for Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure, the only way I measure. Feelings that I have for this fine land. There is so much to discover when you're a long time lover of northern Michigan. I traveled to Trout Creek, just east of Bruce Crossing. It's there I visited the Paul Family Sugar Bush. Just as the name implies, this is, from top to bottom, a family operation. Jesse, his wife Tracy, along with Austin, Dalton, Priscilla, Bethany, and Mitchell, handle all of the tasks involved in turning sap into syrup, along with other products like sugar, seasoning, and more. We headed straight for the woods for a look at where this pure UP sugar water comes from. We're still adding additional lines. We're still expanding out here. Um, this is a 5 16 uh, of an inch tubing. This is what we call our lateral lines. They get hooked up to the main lines here. Um, we have almost 10,000 taps on this bush. And we'll show you how we do it here. We're just uh, wrapping this 5 16 line around this tree. A little block tee in there, her little end of the line. Put that fitting on there. Get the boys down there to pull. Get rid of the slack. And this is where we're going to splice into the main line. This little connector here is going to hang on that wire that suspends the main line. Good. So right now we're going to drill a hole in here. Ooh, a good vacuum. So I'm going to put this rubber gasket in here to keep the metal from sitting from leaking. So here's what we have here. It's basically a 90 with a bar on the top. So that little part in there gets right in that hole. Okay. There you go. Alright, so here's a, what we call the drop line. This is what goes from this tubing here to the tree. There's our actual tap that we put in the tree. So what we're going to do here, this is uh, actually block T, so we use this for the last one on the line. It has, one end is blocked, so that this way sap will not go around the tree here. And the other end is open, so it will go down the line. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in now. See the blocks going around the tree, the open end goes down the line. So we have nearly 10,000 of these, like I said earlier, 10,000 of these, these drop lines. Um, that connect to these lateral lines that then connect to the main line. And every year we come by and have to replace the spiles with fresh ones. That one little innocent drop of sap is going to gang up with all his buddies. And uh, on a good day, we can. On a really good day, we get up to two gallons uh, per tap, which would be almost 20,000 gallons in a day, if you can imagine what 20,000 gallons of sap looks like. So here we're at uh, one of the lowest parts in our sugar bush here. 
and um, between uh, a little bit of slope, but mainly the gravity pulls all the sap down through our mainline tubing. We try to run about a 26 to 27 inches of mercury or, or, or vacuum. And from here, we pump it into our 4,000 gallon tank and a transfer tank, and from that big tank there, it goes underground to the boiling facility, about three quarters of a mile underground. So we have 400 gallons of sap in this tank. We're sending it over your way. Uh, 25 inches of vacuum, and the sap flow is about a four on a scale of one to 10. 10 four, thank you. So just heard from the boys out at uh, our, our east pump shack there. They're sending me about 400 gallons um, of sap, and uh, so it's gonna travel about a mile. It's gonna come right here where we're standing, underground, and it'll go into one of these two tanks we have here. These are 4,500 gallon tanks. Um, we have a total storage um, at here at our farm of about 15 to 16,000 gallons of sap. As I said, this is a family operation. They work together, they make maple syrup together, and they play music together. Um, in the middle of all this, you throw into something else my wife wanted us to do as a family. We have a, uh, a family uh, bluegrass band, the Paul Family Bluegrass, paulfamilybluegrass.com. And um, we play at churches and festivals all over the Midwest. Um, so that's what we do when we're not uh, tapping trees, we're tapping our toes to a little bluegrass music. We use our old iron mule here to bring in our firewood off the property. We use about 35 full cords of firewood on an average year to make all the syrup we need to make. Getting ready to fire up the reverse osmosis machine for today. And every day we change the um, pre filters in it. This reverse osmosis machine will remove up to about three quarters of the water from the sap, which makes our boiling time a whole lot less. It makes for a nicer, lighter syrup. So, from the reverse osmosis machine, it gets pumped up into our head tank up top. It's a fi we have 500 gallons of concentrate. And from there, it'll come down through these pipes. There's a preheater in the steam hood here that'll preheat the sap before coming through the float and going into this flue channel, this, um, this flue pan we have here. Now, flue pan basically has a whole bunch of channels that go up and down. If you were to pull them out, it would probably be about eight times larger than what you see here. It's almost like accordion in, which gives a lot more cooking surface. So most of the work on this evaporator is done right here in the flue pan. From, from our flue pan, it comes into another float box and just graduates with all these channels and these different finish pans. Um, it just graduates a gradient flow, we call it. 
until it comes out here as a finished product. And um, during the cooking process, we're constantly um, taking measurements with hygrometers to make sure that we meet the 66.5% the, um, sugar coming out, and that's how we know it's syrup. So on this particular evaporator, we have three different stacks up here. The first two are just simply to remove the steam. The last one would be um, for the fire. That's, that'd be the, uh, the smokestack. And what you normally see when um, we're making syrup or when a syrup maker is making syrup is the steam coming from one of the first two stacks. Sometimes there's only one, but in our, in our case, we have two. Just th what you normally see is steam, which is just, just basically water that's evaporated off um, that, that's rising up. Every day, depending on the barometric pressure, the, the boiling point of water changes a little bit. So our, our thermometers are, are for syrup get calibrated every day before we boil. So um, the boiling point of water is 212, and for syrup, it's going to be, on average, about 219, depending on the barometric pressure that day. And so we use these here to measure the different heats um, until we get finally to our final pan, which is our, our finished pan, our draw-off pan. So we monitor the heat in all the different finished pans to make sure that, uh, well, that the flow is going correctly. We're gonna make a lot of syrup here in a hurry. She's gotta break over. That's right. There we go, first syrup of the day. As it draws off into this, um, in this uh, tank here, the cooking process releases a lot of nitre. Um, it's just kind of mineral deposits, just kind of gritty. So we're, we're used to our table syrup in America now to be filtered. So we run it through this filter press here. It's a whole bunch of papers that collect all the mineral deposits, nitre or sugar sand. So when we're finished at the end, after it goes through these, all these banks and filters, is a, a filtered, very clean product that we store in stainless steel barrels until we bottle it at a later time. One of the job perks we have here at Paul Family Sugar Bush is we get to sample every single barrel and sometimes we sample two or three times just for quality control. That's good. So we sterilize the barrels with the steam water that comes from all the steam that hits the roof of that. It all comes down to this little old channel in here that goes down to this, which goes into the barrel, sterilize the barrel. So after that we put the cap on the barrel, we roll it on the ground, and then we open it up and it's sterilized. Yeah, it's always a good feeling when you put the cap on one of these. Yes, sir. That's nice.
So right now I'm getting these sample bottles together. And th these sample bottles tell us a lot. They tell us the color of the syrup, how light it is. For different colors, you have go golden delicate, you have amber and dark. So the reason why we keep these sample bottles is for quality control and if somebody wants to sample the barrel, we'll just crack this open and then have a little try. We keep them for three years. Yeah, the old system of doing it was you would have all these different samples of dark and light. So now we have this little checker here and that tells us the whole thing. It's a lot more accurate and I'm going to wipe this down because each little fingerprint could throw the reader off. So. And this is going to tell us how light or how dark it is. So that would be an amber rich. So that would be right in between these two, right here. So we put the drum number on here so we could always tell how light syrup was in that drum that we produced. Yeah, you could tell that first one, the second barrel, is a little lighter than the sixth one. So we keep these in the freezer and we keep these for three years also. So. We also make uh, uh, maple sugar and maple cream. We use uh, this, this mixture here. We take the uh, syrup down to 260 degrees and we put it in this mixture. So we get all the remaining moisture out of it and it comes out the consistency like this. And this would be a one pound bag of sugar. This machine here um, is what we use to make our maple cream with. It basically, it gets boiled to 234 degrees, puts in an ice bath and then we put it in here. And this gear pump just pulls and stretches the, uh, the taffy into a, into a maple cream. And this is what a jar of our maple cream looks like here. Here's our spice rub. We use this for, for grilling. It goes uh, good on anything. Uh, crock pot meals. Um, yeah, it's another big, big seller for us. So it's really, really good uh, barbecue rub. Something that uh, we we're, we're, we're take very serious, we're, we're humbled and honored, and, and it's a big responsibility to know that, that we put about 4,000 gallons of maple syrup on America's breakfast table. And that's something we, we do take very serious, and we, we do not skimp on the quality of it. The sky is getting dark And the clouds are moving in When the storms of life Fill our hearts with pain Just let the Savior in For when we trust in Him He will lead us Beyond the rain so we've been blessed with, with five kids and um, we, we wanted to do something together that, that would uh, just, just be uh, beneficial for the family and, and give the kids something positive to do. So we, my wife actually was the one who said, um, you know, let's, let's, let's do a farm. It would be great to have a farm. So here we are down in sunny Florida thinking, UP sounds like a great idea, lots of maples. So the family had this vision. And um, we wanted to come up, and, and we all wanted to come up and, and try our hand at maple syrup. So it was a family vision that we had to come up and farm, and, and uh, we spent six months at least just every day looking for, for the right piece of land. And it, and it was hard, it was discouraging, we didn't even think we were going to find it. But um, we settled out here in Trout Creek, and we have. Uh, right now, 10,000 taps this year. We're hoping to make 4,000 gallons of syrup. We have enough trees out here to go up to 15, 16,000 maybe here and shortly. Uh, and there's plenty of room for expansion here for the family to stay on and just, just expand and grow the business. So it was a vision we had to move from Florida to come up here and do that. And most people originally or initially think we're crazy, but then they start thinking about it and they know it's a good life and they, they're in favor of it. Beyond the rain. Beyond the rain, there'll be no more dying, no more crying, no more pain. So at Paul Family, we, we, it truly is. It's not just the, the, the name of our business, Paul Family, but family is really important to us, um, especially with, with uh, what's going on in, in our country and culture where the family's falling apart. So um, when we say Paul Family, it's because it truly is a family business. We have, um, like I said, five children and everybody's doing something 
including my wife. She handles all the, all the um, uh, bookkeeping and accounting for us, keeps that running. She's the homeschooler. Uh, she teaches all her, all her children. Um, the little ones, they, they help with the chicken chores all the way up. She's um, Bethany's seven. She sings with the band now. Going on up, uh, you know, um, Priscilla, she, she fits in everywhere. She'll help us load load the arch, help us with the syrup operation, helps make meals. She's uh, Tracy's right hand. And then Dalton, the next one on up, boy, uh, you know, if you see him around here, he's always fixing something for us because I tend to always break it. <laughs> That's just how it goes. So he's always fixing things. Um, he's our mechanic. He's also very good with the uh, the whole syrup production. Um, he's, he's still schooling very hard, too, so that guy pulls a lot of extra duty. And then you have Austin. He's 19 currently. He plays uh, Resonator Dobro for us. And um, he helps very much with the music, uh, putting that together, the arrangements. But he is very, very hands-on with the whole Sugarbush operation. He runs the reverse osmosis machine for us. He uh, backs me up on cooking. Um, so, I mean, this is his full-time job. And uh, so when we say Paul family Sugarbush, it truly is a family. And everybody has something to contribute. He will lead us beyond so, you know, and, and looking ahead um, down, down the line or down the road, I mean, you know, I don't know um, what, uh, what's, what the Lord's going to give us, but I do know that there's opportunity here and the boys have shown an interest in it. And I mean, we're, at, we're up here, they love it. And so we're, we're looking to expand and for them to take over as, as Tracy and I find a little cabin on the lake somewhere. <laughs> we're not telling them where. <laughs> yeah, we're not telling them where. <laughs>